Besides hanging a rainbow flag in my yard, what can I do so my good intentions turn into actions that provide help? All right, welcome to Quick Show. My name is Greg Matson, and I am your host. In this episode, we are going to talk about Deseret Book again and the content that they are... What are they doing that they are supporting that they are producing and disseminating to the members of the church that is well very controversial to say the least before we get into this this episode is brought to you by cardio miracle i have another uh health badge that i can put on to this that i've been waiting quite some time to talk about And that is my gout. I've already talked about health or my heart. I've talked about the, how do you say it uh, for FDA approval, the the abnormal pressure in my veins, which has been monitored. I can see the change. And then now with gout. uh, Before, for the previous 18 months, before I started taking Cardio Miracle, and this is absolutely insane if you know anything about gout, but I was getting one to two attacks every month and they were just upping the medication over and over and over again so that was one thing that took me a little while to find out to see how this went i believe i've been on the product now for five months four or five months i've had three gout attacks three gout attacks in the last five months so something else to consider when when looking at the product Uh, i'm not making any claims for you Right, but uh, I can tell you that this is something that I believe in, and that I use every single day. Go to quickmedia.com, go to the homepage, scroll down, watch the video that I did on this, and and try it out for yourself. Okay, Deseret Book. Wow, uh, so many places to go on this, and we could go, we could do a very long episode uh, just breaking this course down what they did is they came up with a new course that is offered by a gay latter-day saint and when i say gay we need to be very specific about what we mean by that and in the course we need to be very specific when you someone says gay some people say well that's someone who's living a gay lifestyle right some people will equate it with that and that's why some latter-day saints and others will say i'm not gay but i experience same-sex attraction because they don't want to identify with a lifestyle that is oftentimes called gay. Other members of the church simply identify as gay. They have same-sex attraction. It's a part of their identity, and uh, they just go along with gay. That doesn't mean that they live a gay lifestyle. It could be very well that they are a covenant-keeping, temple-going, tithing-paying, church-going, member of the church supporting the church completely but they they identify as gay and experience same-sex attraction so different ideas on what gay would mean and that matters also actually geographically countries that you're in and how that term is used so with the host here uh ben shalotti uh he uses the term gay latter-day saint but he is Uh, professes to be and appears to be a covenant-keeping member of the church. That's an important distinction and something to consider as we go through this. Now, I've waited in this arena before, and and I, uh, I get hit on both sides whenever I do this. Uh, I, I am told that I am too nice, that I am not harsh enough with this, and from one side and from the other side, I'm called homophobic and, and every other accusation and epithet that you can think of. But I think that these are the areas that we must discuss in the church and in our culture. These issues have got to be brought to the forefront because usually what we do with these things is we kind of put our head in the sand and just say, well, I wish this would go away or I hope that this can grow if you're on the other side of this and and be supported and not there's not going to be any opposition to anything that is said here these need to be talked about because we need to understand what is happening 
and we need to be able to deal with these things because this is going to identitarianism and the LGBTQ issues are going to become more and more front and center in our lives as the culture wraps more around LGBTQ issues in the United States and in the West. And that means it's coming to our wards, it's coming to our stakes. You've probably experienced this in, in an elders quorum meeting, in a Relief Society meeting, in young women's and young men's, at the pulpit in sacrament meeting or at a stake center or at a stake conference. And, and I, this is, we need to learn to have clear thinking on this. And, and to understand how to treat these things with love and compassion and with reason and truth, with commandments. And that's my concern with this course that is brought to front and center here from uh, Deseret Book in their, their video content. They have video courses that they call SEEK, S-E-E-K. And so you can go through and, and, and go online to Deseret Book. You go to the Seek section, and they have all these different types of, of you know, mostly shorter courses. When I say shorter, I mean maybe up to 30 to, to 90 minutes. Uh, that you know, A lot of these other online courses are very, very extensive, and these are about 30 to 90 minutes. This one in particular is about 60 minutes. And this one is called Building Zion, Faithful LGBTQ allyship. Here's the first red flag that we need to look at. Allyship can mean a lot of different things. I don't talk about being an ally to the LGBTQ community because the word itself, allyship, brings so much along with it. It, it, it is, for example, when, when people are talking about transitioning, is that something that I support for transgenderism? Or what about drag queens going to kindergartners in elementary schools? That's LGBTQ because you'll see the pride flag there all the time. And is that something that I support? What else do I support with the LGBTQ community? Do I support the political back to activism behind LGBTQ issues? What does that mean to be an ally? And and so it's kind of the Martin Bailey thing, right? Someone will say, "Well, are you? Do you not care for LGBTQ individuals?" Of course I do, and I've I've I think shown that and professed that on the podcast many many times. But being an ally to me is something else. If someone asks, "Are you an ally?" my my response is, "I'm a friend." Right? I will be a friend to you. I want to be your friend. I care about you. I love you. You belong. But being an ally to me is, is a completely different thing. There's an article on Public Square Magazine called, I think it's called Discipleship versus Allyship. It's very good. You ought to, I'll, I'll link it on the description to go take a look at uh, the differences here that, that we're looking at. Mostly, I believe they're talking about expressive individualism versus the doctrine of Christ. And, and again, we get down into these issues of identity and, and trying to push forward harder and harder this identity of LGBTQ. It's not that it doesn't exist, and it's not that it doesn't need to be addressed. It does. There are problems there. There are issues there where there needs to be more love and support. But it is not it, it, it is being focused on so much that it brings other identities down, like, and I, and I know that President Nelson is doing this, like, as he talks about the first three identities we should have, a child of God, a child of the covenant, and a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so as we raise these other identities, regardless, gender, sexual orientation, race, etc., up above these other three identities, we are, we are distorting we are perverting the relationship that we have with God, I believe. And, you know, even if it's just a little bit. And so being an ally to me, it means much, much more than putting my arm around somebody and saying, I love you. How can I help? What can I do? Right? There, there's a lot more to it. The other thing with, with this is they talk about the pride flag. And 
it's it's the the content is complete support of waving the flag and again this is content produced by deseret book and so essentially what deseret book is saying here is that the church supports the pride flag and again what does the pride flag represent what does that mean because i see it waved in a lot of different places at a lot of different times and you heard the opening statement on this let me go over a couple more here in the introduction on this course and i'm going to have to only show very short clips because it's behind a paywall you can go to the course yourself on deseret news and again it's called building zion faithful lgbtq allyship and and look through the whole thing yourself it's 15 dollars to go take a look at it so let's just look at a couple of these short clips here my neighbor hung up a rainbow flag is it okay for me to do that? You might have questions such as, how can I be an effective ally, an ally to those who feel excluded? Besides hanging a rainbow flag in my yard, what can I do so my good intentions turn into actions that provide help? Okay. Okay, so this is Deseret Book saying that they're, they're, they're obviously approving this. They produced this. They produced this. This is not um, surprising to me at all. Right, they were going to do an anti-racism course last year with someone who since then has distanced themselves in their own words from the church with very questionable, very, very questionable tenets and principles in that course. And the only reason that they pulled that back is because the guy who was creating it had called Elder Holland after his 2021 BYU address. He had called him satanic and then doubled down on it. Uh, it, with discussing this with those at Deseret Book. It's, who is doing this? Who is, I, I don't understand the filtering process that's going on here. This is a political agenda. There, there's no way around that. When you're talking about a flag, like the pride flag, this is a political agenda. Consider for a moment the Confederate flag. I remember when I was young, I used to watch the show Dukes of Hazard, and they had that, uh, challenger, that Dodge Challenger that was uh, red and it had the uh, the Confederate flag over the roof. Well, of course, growing up and, and even after watching that and getting older, I never once associated that flag with racism, ever. But some people do. But it wasn't the intent of the show to be, hey, these are some racists. No, they're just saying, this is from the South. Right, But there are other things that are tied to that. It's the same thing with the pride flag. What does that actually represent? Because it is waived for political rallies. It is waived with a political purpose. And Deseret Book is supporting that wave flagging with this production here. They are supporting waving the pride flag. Or what about a MAGA hat? How about if this guy was wearing a MAGA hat? Instead of, a, instead of talking about waving a pride flag. Do, do you think there would be a problem? Do you think people would have a problem with Deseret Book producing a video with uh, a MAGA hat on it? This, this, is, this is very wrong. It, it is, again, it is coming in with, the, with, with compassion and tolerance, and, and, but with no guardrails on it whatsoever. Now, let me be clear on this. This is... There's a lot of good content in this course. And I think that there's, when I say good content, I mean on the side of how to approach a gay Latter-day Saint or, or how to approach LGBTQ uh, community members, so to speak, inside of the church. How do you talk with them? What can you do to help them? Great. I'm all for that. That is all really good. But this is all one-sided in this course. It's always all about that tolerance and that compassion. There's nothing in there. You can go through the entire course. You're not going to see a single thing on that's positive about the family proclamation, that's positive about um, the law of chastity. The example that he's going to give us here of, of someone in, and how to talk to someone is another gay Latter-day Saint who has decided to date men. And that's the example of being supportive to somebody else. 
Now, obviously, you want to show love to someone. For me, in that example, well, we'll get to that example in a minute uh, and, 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 and talk about that when we get there. But this is, this is not, the pride flag is many things. Again, it's waved at drag shows for elementary students also. Is that something that I'm now supporting? I, I don't use the flag for that very reason. It is a political statement, and it represents an awful lot of things in identitarianism that I believe are very detrimental to the culture and to the family. That does not mean, again, clear thinking. Like Elder Oak says, we can parse this out. That does not mean that if I'm not an ally or I don't wave the flag, as Ben here is saying we should do, that I don't care about the LGBTQ members of the church. I do care about them. And, and we need to separate those things, not conflate them as we're getting here in this, this course from Deseret News. This, to me, is not just an issue from, you know, from the host here and from Deseret News of ignorance. It's not ignorance, right? This is gross negligence in, in not putting guardrails up around this content. Before I go further into this, however, I, I want to reference an article that was written by Jeff Benyon, who is a gay Latter-day Saint. He identifies as someone who experiences same-sex attraction. He wrote this also in Public Square magazine about the pride flag. The, the, the name of the article, this is from June 2022, the name of the article is Draping Yourself in a Rainbow Flag Doesn't Help Me Feel Loved. Right? He, he, he is, he's pushing back on the whole idea that we're getting in this Deseret Book course here. He says, some time ago, I had lunch with a member of a state presidency from the Northwest. Once he learned that I experienced same-sex attraction, in an attempt to demonstrate his bona fides as an ally, he got out his phone and showed me pictures of himself draped in a rainbow flag and attending a pride march. In his attempt to build a bridge and show he understood me and advocated for me, he inadvertently demonstrated the opposite. Since I don't identify with the pride flag and see some deep conflicts in pride festivities in relation to my own faith and convictions. Again, it's talking about supporting the pride flag in a church production is extremely inappropriate, I believe. My opinion. He goes on, the good-hearted member's attempt to show solidarity with me seems a perfect illustration in a miniature of what the good-hearted writers at church-owned media, like Deseret Book, are doing with many of their LGBT-affirming stories. This is the perfect example of this. And again, I have spoken to many gay Latter-day Saints who do not approve of the flag. That is, it's a political statement, and it represents many things apart from love and support. You don't have to be an ally. You can be a friend. You don't have to wave the pride flag. You can demonstrate charity. And, and that's an important thing. And I will say again, I've, I, I always bring this up and I get pushed back on this also. But we don't show enough charity. I don't believe that we do. And you say, well, Greg, there, we focus on this all the time. We talk about this thing. Well, how, how can we not show enough charity? It's not that, uh, let, let's, let's put it this way. Most people show enough charity, I think. But there are, there are uh, a group of people who are very uncomfortable with all of this that seem to repel and push off even if somebody is just talking about going through these experiences and with apparently an inability to stretch and to empathize not with them disobeying the commandments but just oh, just empathizing with a struggle that they might have, right? And that, that should be something that we are more focused on. This is not just a, another struggle that someone goes through. Sometimes people will make comments and saying, well, you know, what about a single person, who a single man who has never been married and, and is older and is, you know, the struggles that he has with the law of Chessie? Obviously, obviously that's an issue. 
or any any single person not being married, they're going to have struggles. Everybody has struggles. Point well taken. But in most cases of those that are have been certainly in the past the least the least uh, uh, those that would have the greatest reason to feel like they don't belong oftentimes are in that LGBTQ community. That's my point. All right. So so charity isn't a very important thing in in I think bridging that gap. But what is happening here with Ben and with Deseret Book is that they're that's all that they're talking about is is moving toward this and everything that is political and and but what Ben is talking about here is again the idea of that tolerance and that compassion being everything it's not everything it's not everything it's important it's very important but it's got to have truth and reason that goes along with it and we don't need to bring in the world and and their tenets such as allyship and pride flags these are very secular type ideas into the church in order to love and support our LGBTQ brothers and sisters. And by the way, where is the, this is a perfect example again of where are the covenant-keeping Latter-day Saint LGBTQ members in this video, apart from the host, being used as examples and support for the church and for the gospel and the doctrine of Christ and, and keeping your covenants. Because there are many of them, many, many, many of them. But that always gets pushed to the side, it seems. Instead, it is about the flag and it's about allyship. Now, this first section here is called Living the Two Great Commandments. And this is very ironic because, number one, what has been expressed very precisely and poignantly in the last year, year and a half, especially in going, so you, you can think of uh, Elder Christofferson in his last two BYU addresses in 2022, talking about the two great commandments, and that's what this section is. It's living the two great commandments. The top commandment, obviously, is to love God first and then love everyone else, and and this epitomizes exactly what Elder Christofferson and other, others of the brethren have spoken of when they talk about living these two great commandments. He doesn't go into the first commandment. Ben doesn't. He's talking about the second commandment. And basically, he is implicitly reversing the two commandments exactly against what the brethren have talked about. And what he goes over here is just living the second commandment. Again, not prioritizing loving God first, which is basically obedience to the law, obedience to the commandments, following the gospel, keeping your covenants. But he goes and focuses only on number two, which is the exact opposite of the point that the brethren are, are, are giving us. And this is the trend that you see throughout the entire course. The focus again here on these two great commandments that he has is tolerance and compassion. Yes, we need those two things with guardrails, with truth, and with reason. And I'll give you an example of this. I mean, how much love and compassion do you have for someone if all you're doing is, if you're not looking for their long-term well-being? Right? If, if you're not looking, that, that to me is what charity really is. We talk about faith, hope, and charity, these great virtues of Christ. And, and the greatest of them is charity, as we learn in the Book of Mormon. Well, if the greatest is charity, what, what is that? And I think that if you go through the scriptures and you see how charity is used, and, and understanding that it is the pure love of Christ, that is... At its highest level, the concern about your eternal well-being. And that is not always the concern of how you feel today. And so tolerance and compassion are important if they're put in the right context. 
we need to have clear thinking and parse these things out. This is what Thomas S. Monson said back in 2015. The philosophies of men, we talk about that a lot, surround us. The face of sin today often wears the mask of tolerance. Do not be deceived. This is my concern here. And it's... Love and compassion need to be coupled with the commandments and with truth and with reason. Because otherwise, that love and compassion is short-term, period. Now, agency is an important thing, and everybody has their agency, and, and we don't need to dislike or to uh, disassociate or to not love those that make decisions that we don't agree with. That is, is not the right thing to do. And, and as you get older, those of you that are older, you know that whether it's family members or friends or others, they can disappoint you. They can make decisions that you don't agree with. You love those people regardless. And then hopefully they make better decisions in the future. But that's not the message that is given here in this, uh, in, in, in this course. Now, I want to go into something positive that he says that I think is an important thing to understand. Again, I'm not fully against everything he's saying. There are many concerns here that I think we should all have. But there are also concerns on the other side. And, and this is something positive that I think we need to follow. This comes from an apostle. When I walk out of church, I know that I'm welcome and that, I, and that people want me Absolutely. There, and that people will miss me if I didn't come. Absolutely. Elder Ballard said, we need to listen to and understand what our LGBT brothers and sisters are feeling and experiencing. Certainly, we must do better than we have done in the past so that all members feel they have a spiritual home where their brothers and sisters love them and where they have a place to worship and serve the Lord. Okay, so I think that that's crucial to understand. Again, we need to understand what our LGBT brothers and sisters are feeling and experiencing. Right? It, it's... You can't, there, there's a group, there's still a group of people that believe that, they, that these people are just purely making a choice. That's just, just a choice. And see, the problem with that is you don't know that. You don't know that. And, and, and it invalidates everything that those individuals are going through. I, I have seen this from, for, with little kids growing up all the way to full adulthood and, and, and it's very clear that they are going through this their entire lives. And to say, to, to, to ignore that would be a horrible feeling for that individual. I hope we can all understand that. That would be a horrible feeling of, of loneliness and not belonging. And that's not cool. We don't need to make that judgment, right? We don't need to make that judgment. Uh, Elder Ballard goes on and says, certainly we, we must do better than we have done in the past. This is not some overture to some left-wing ideology. That's not what it is. It's called being Christ-like. Again, parse this out, split it apart. Yes, identitarianism is, is, identitarianism is running rampant, and, and it's a problem, and it is an attack on the family, ultimately. They're, all these things are true, and the principles and the tenets of, of these things are, are very disturbing coming out of critical race theory and, and intersectionality and postmodernism. That's, that's where this comes from. But... At the same time, each of these individuals is a, is a child of God. They're a child of God with every bit of value that anybody else has. And we, we need to do a better job of loving them without compromising standards. Right? Again, 
That's not what he covers, unfortunately. He only covers one side of this. He's a lot less concerned about the eternal ramifications and consequences and and eternal life of each of the individuals than he is receiving the love and compassion. We we need to we need to think clearly on these things. Now, in his lesson three, which is called "Will You Tell Me Your Story," he's going to give the example of dating other guy, a gay man dating other guys, and supporting that. And look, I'm going to give you my own opinions on this once I go through it. But again, it's one sided, and and this is so odd in a church produced course. This is this is so it is so confusing. For those that are that are going to watch this, and they're going to think, well, I should I should wave a pride flag, I should be an ally and go along with everything that an ally represents for the LGBTQ community. I should uh, inwardly support or within the church support same sex dating and marriage. And see that that's a confusing thing. I, I saw a uh, I saw a comparison with with uh, the the recent uh, Respect for Marriage Act and prohibition. And there are some some a few things there that that we can look at as as, as being a parallel there. For example, where where prohibition prohibited all alcohol use, uh, the church supported that and then eventually caved in and gave in to prohibition. They were in the culture war, right? So when prohibition was abolished, the church eventually went along with it. I think they were the last state to, to, to approve this and or, or to go along with it. And, and maybe the state laws, I'm not sure. But they were the last state to get a jump on board with uh, the abolition of, of prohibition. That doesn't mean that within the church we approve of it. We approve of drinking alcohol. But we understand that in the world, people are going to drink alcohol. We can live with that. And, and it's the same idea with, uh, with, with LGBTQ individuals. You know, if, if in, in, in our world today, there is going to be same-sex marriage. And so we can live within that world. We must live within that world without actually supporting the doctrine of, of the world, right? We have our own doctrine. We believe in eternal life. We believe in exaltation. We believe in the marriage of a man and a woman and eternal families and sealing those families. But in the world, we're going to have more and more of this. And so as an example, what would you do if a family member or a friend or a friend's kid or whoever it might be had a same-sex marriage or had a couple i mean is that something that you would go to many people would say no i would never go to it i don't support it um would you go somewhere where they serve alcohol and i know they're not exactly the same thing it's just i'm trying to i'm trying to make us think here about this a little bit see i would do it my wife and i would not have a problem going to a same-sex wedding if if our friends asked us to go and support them Uh, i i would i would go and do that um, it's not that I approve of it. I don't, but I, I personally would do that. I don't have a problem with that, but within the church, I have a problem when this is promoted pretty darn close to being promoted in this content here. Now it's a problem. It's like saying, okay, well, you have a problem with drugs and with alcohol and you have this ideology behind it and this, this desire to to take drugs, right? Or you have this desire to drink alcohol and I'm going to go ahead inside of the church and say, yeah, go ahead and do that, right? See, I'm not going to do that. That's not going to be okay. But if you're not a member of the church, go right ahead. I don't care. But I'm not going to produce content from the church-sponsored bookstore that is going to say, it's okay for you to drink alcohol. This is okay. You can say, I'm going to love you anyway if someone drinks alcohol or breaks the word of wisdom. Of course. 
But this this content here is basically supporting uh, uh, going outside of the law of chastity and same-sex marriage within a church context. It wasn't until about a year ago um, that I started like allowing myself mm-hmm. to say, okay, well, this isn't really working out. And I started asking myself like what was really important to me in my life and that I really wanted. Okay, so he's saying this is going to lead to they're in a discussion right now, and what they're talking about here is how to talk with someone who is an LGBTQ member of the church. But what they're talking about is something that is going to obviously lead this man out of the church. It's same-sex dating. And, 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 and it's just so odd that the message here, this is a course to learn from. The message here is great. You know, um, um, why is this example being used? Why is it that this is the example being used? It's, it's very odd. Let's keep going with it. And as I had like a lot of just time on my knees and thinking, like I, I kind of realized that for me, um, having a partner in life is something that I really wanted. He's going to say he wants a male partner and spending time on his needs and this is what he wants again i mean i'm all about agency ultimately it's agency whether it's that you're you're <laughs> the lord is the same way our heavenly father is the same way that is that is the most important thing you get to choose your own destiny and make your own choices because that's what helps you grow that's what helps you learn that's what helps you develop and then you take on the consequences of those decisions and that agency that's a must, and that is above all things. You must allow agency. So here, a guy here, his, this, this man here is also a member of the church. He is a gay member of the church. He identifies he's out as gay, and he has prayed and decided that he wants a partner, and he wants, which means what? That doesn't mean just like I'm going to date somebody here and there. He wants a partner, and therefore, is that something that is going to lead him out of the church? Well, it has to, at least to some degree. And fine, if that's what he wants, that's, that's fine. That is his decision. I can still love that person. I can still care for that person. But the way that this is set up in the course is very confusing because it, it, it tends to lean toward a support for these actions from a church perspective. Um, I spent a lot of time praying and, and eventually made the decision couple months ago to start dating guys okay so you know that's just confirmation of what i was saying there and so that's that's the example that that is used by ben here for how to speak with a gay member of the church it's it's odd it is um i I don't know i mean i'm almost without words in, in 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 going through this i am i am dumbfounded on one side and i am not surprised on the other that this is being produced so all of the camera work all of the lighting all of the stage work here all of all of the editing etc were put together the script are all put together there's a lot of thought put into this and then it's put together for you to pay money to learn about this that to me is a real problem. I don't know what you think. This to me is a problem. Where where does where does Deseret Book where are they leading us here? What are they leading us toward? What what are they trying to accomplish with this? Now, if you think that what I'm talking about here is out of context, go it's only $15. I'm sure Deseret Book would appreciate you buying this and listening to it and being look, how do I say this? I mean, on one side, again, I appreciate several of the things that he talks about in terms of being able to talk to somebody in the church. It's important, right? Because some of us feel uncomfortable with this and, 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 and therefore an LGBTQ member uh, in the church is going to feel uncomfortable even bringing it up or talking about it. But we have to separate this you have to separate the love and compassion and the truth and, and reason and the commandments. 
you, you having love and compassion does not mean supporting an example here of someone of, of, of someone going out and having a same sex partner. That doesn't mean you stop loving them. But that that is not tolerance. That's not what tolerance means. That is not real compassion. That's not real Christ like love. Christ would love that person, but they're not going to encourage this. They're not going to say that this is okay. He's not going to say this is okay. So I appreciate a number of the coaching tips that are brought up here, but it leaves a lot to be desired. In addition here, there was a comment about the family proclamation that I did not get into where the host had a problem with what was said by a teacher. So the host is in a, I think it was an elders quorum uh, meeting. I'm not positive about that. And the family proclamation was taught and he had a problem with what was taught in the family proclamation. And maybe it was, he said it was something that was not actually in the family proclamation. Great, so he raised his hand and he said something about it. But there's no support for the family, pro- for, for, for the family proclamation either. He's not, he doesn't come back and say, you know, even though this is true and is built on true doctrine, Right, this portion here was was not in agreement with what the proclamation says. There's no support for it, and that's not a surprise here, I don't think. In the end, this is not about building Zion. This is simply just love and compassion, and those are void without true charity and true Christ-like love. We need to have that Christ-like love and that reasoning and that ability to love somebody while we hold on to standards and, if possible, help somebody else live, uh, help hold on to standards. That's, that's the opposite of the message that's offered here. Thanks for listening.